Hello international friends, this is Skull Babylon of Paradigm Shift Radio and you're about to listen to episode 18. On this episode we had Ian on to shed some light on the topic of schizophrenia based on his own personal experiences. From there the conversation branched into topics of interdimensionality and consciousness in general. As always, Paradigm Shift Radio wants to hear more personal accounts of the various interesting experiences we have all had. So consider calling into a future episode of the show if you too have something you'd like to share. Add us on Facebook, tell your friends friends and help get the word out there that Paradigm Shift Radio exists so that we can keep sharing our stories and continue to learn from each other. Enjoy the show. This reality is not as cut and dry as it appears to be, and we've only begun to peel back some of the first layers. This is Skull Babylon, and you are listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. This is the 18th weekend in a row that we've been doing this, guys. So congratulations to some of you who have actually been joining us since the very beginning, 18 weeks ago. And what is Paradigm Shift Radio? Well, Paradigm Shift Radio is a show where we like to talk about the things that don't usually get talked about in regular public spheres of conversation. So if you've ever listened to Coast to Coast, it's kind of like that in a sense, but at the same time, this is a very grassroots community oriented. Uh, we want to be able to hear from you guys. We want you guys to be able to use Paradigm Shift as a platform to talk about all those mysteries of the universes that we've been able to observe as a collective perspective so that we can help take these different aspects of this uh, giant puzzle that we're all in in order to sort of get a better perspective of what this reality is that we are dealing with. So it's a very mysterious universe that we're living in, and that's the whole point of this show is to try and comprehend it from the various point of views that we uh, all have. So... That said, if you're listening to this show on Blog Talk in the future, uh, just so you know, Paradigm Shift Radio episodes will always go up on YouTube afterwards, so even if you are listening to this on Blog Talk right now, feel free to check out the YouTube, presuming it is up. It usually goes up within the first uh, 24 to 48 hours of the broadcast, which is always on Saturday evening. And then from there, the YouTube links are just uh, a more accessible way to help share the program, and they also have the embedded annotations, and the annotations will include show notes and links, any videos that we might mention. So it's a little bit more user-friendly and convenient for for those to uh, be able to use those options for the show. So that said, big shout-out to everyone who's in the chat room right now. Uh, Just tell me, guys, since I'm just sort of on my own right now, how's the sound in the live chat? Shout out to Casper Morgan, Vaughn Halford, uh, Fudge, Fudge, <laughs> and uh, a whole bunch of other guests. Uh, Jared is in here, Explosion in the Sky. Catherine is in here. Uh, Catherine was one of our winners for the 3DL All Access Pass that we gave away not too long ago. And uh, we're going to be giving another one away of those again. Um, bah, bah, bah. So hold on, just sort of reading things and thinking things at the same point. But 3DL All Access Passes. That's what I want to get to. So this uh, this may be the last week that, that you have a chance to win the all-access passes, just in the sense that 3DL, the Three Days of Light Gathering, is happening on November 2nd or 4th in Asheville, North Carolina. And today's the 20th, and if we were to give one away next week, that would be cutting it pretty short for someone to sort of plan their travel time around that. So we have two passes left, and I'm thinking we're going to give both of them away today. So anybody who's entered into this draw has a chance to win. And how do you enter into the draw? Well, it's quite easy. First of all, we would ask you politely to help promote Paradigm Shift Radio because since this is very uh, grassroots and stuff, a big part of the workflow that we have for this show is simply you guys tune in, you guys add to the show content, whether it's calling in, being in the live chat, or just simply messaging ideas back and forth. And then from there, once the YouTube episodes go up, feel free to share those episodes as well so they can get it out further to other people. That's all that we ask you. ask you to tell a few friends about the show to get more people involved because the more people who are involved with this show, the more we all learn. And, and this is a very sort of slow and steady thing, so there's no rush, but, but we'll, uh, it's going to continue to grow over time. So once you share the show, message us on the Facebook Paradigm Shift Radio page, so facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio, and simply tell us that you'd like to be entered into the draw for 3DL. And again, 3DL is a consciousness festival and retreat, and the website for that is 3DL. 3dlgathering.com, as in the number 3DL, Days of Light, gathering.com, and check it out. There's going to be lots of musicians, lots of lots of workshops, uh, learning stuff about like meditation and, and like activating your Merkaba if you really want to get to that point. I know Phoenix is probably going to be there by the sounds of it. Phoenix 
from uh, those of you familiar with the Spirit Science, no Phoenix, and he's going to be there as well as the rest of the Spirit Science crew and myself included. And uh, that's something that I uh, oh, and Horse Rising will be performing on the Spirit Science stage. So Von Halford, our good buddy there, is going to be involved with that. So a lot of exciting stuff happening at 3DL. So we want you guys to be able to get involved with that. So if you're listening to the show live right now. First of all, like I said, if you're already entered into the competition, that's great. But just within the first few minutes of the show, since we're getting warmed into it, and we do have an interesting topic on the agenda tonight, which is uh, related around schizophrenia. But I just ask you guys who are in the live chat right now just to sort of promote this show as we're sort of getting warmed up and getting comfortable to help get more people involved. Because I'll mention the 3DL thing again, and that just gives them another chance to uh, get involved before we do the draw at the end of the show. So like I said, to get in the vault, involved with the draw, many of you have already done this. Simply message the Facebook page at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio. Tell us what you like about the show and say I'd like to be entered into the draw. And then we'll have the draw later in the episode. So it's only a 90-minute episode tonight, which means things are going to be fairly uh, concise. But it's going to be some really, really worthwhile and interesting and engaging conversation. I prompt you that. Um, so, sorry guys, I'm just trying to, what what is going to be happening on the agenda tonight, my buddy uh, Ian is going to be coming on to talk about his experience with schizophrenia, as I briefly alluded to. Uh, he's just having a few technical difficulties, so da, 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 dial in through Skype or use your phone. Hmm, okay. Um, yeah, in case you didn't notice, uh, Jen, who's been our co-host in the past, um, she intended to be here tonight, and uh, I know she's just like doing something, so that's uh, kind of why I'm taking care of things on my own end, and it seems that Ian may be okay. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I think I think Ian has dialed in, so we'll, we'll be bringing him on shortly. Um, let me just double check to make sure I'm going to bring the right person on on the queue. Okay, so another thing that I did want to mention in, in terms of the three days of light gathering, um, I, as I said, I'm going to be down there and I'm going to be doing some videography work. So I'm going to be putting together probably like a mini documentary. Now, I'm still not entirely sure uh, how it's going to happen. I mean, a lot of it's going to be going with the flow. I may sort of do individual videos per day. Um, and I may also do a like sort of short one hour documentary that's kind of like a you know a travel journey documentary which will actually start like before I even get to 3DL as as a, I'm actually going to be traveling down there with uh, Julian Forrest and Charles Gilcrest and uh, Jay who we had on episode 16 talking about sacred geometry uh, so we're we're, we're going to be traveling down there so that's going to be pretty neat just in, in that sense but once I get down there. Um, to have something to compare it to in terms of the work that I've done before, for those of you who are listening to this and maybe you haven't seen this before, first of all, if you haven't yet, go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com. That's kind of the main website where you'll find links for all the other Paradigm Shift communities out there too. And uh, for those of you who are brand new to this whole Paradigm Shift thing, it's not just about this radio show. Uh, there's Paradigm Shift physical communities in different locations all throughout the globe, and there's more of those popping up each and every week. So if you're interested in starting one in your own community, all it is is just about inc like bringing the tribe together is one of the best ways I can describe it. So it's like you creating a hobby for yourself where you go out of your way to like create something that's going to attract other like-minded people so that you can start having conversations in physical circles as well as online circles as well about some of the things that we don't usually get the chance to talk about. So that's kind of, you know, this show, this radio show is kind of like a virtual version of what could happen in a physical uh, meeting for a Paradigm Shift community. So again, go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com, check out the directory to see all the other Paradigm Shift communities, but also check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash Spacelight, that's uh, S-P-A-C-E-L-I-T-E, -E, opposed to L-I-G-H-T. L I G H T and uh, check out that I'll put a link for that in the chat right now and I'll have this link embedded into the episode as well but that uh, space light itself is uh, it is a natural alkaline health and athletic electrolyte formula which uh, is something that my um, buddy Joe like he basically made it as, as a scientist it's, it's very, very like, rogue scientist style you, you could say but uh, that's something that we could get into in another episode. I know I do plan on having Joe on the episode, so check out the documentary that I did for that. It's called Journey to the West, and it's kind of similar going back to this whole three days of life thing that I was talking about. I think it's going to be kind of similar 
in the sense of like that was me traveling out to Vancouver to meet up with Joe and uh, I sort of like did all this stuff and everything and uh, it's also about the space light which is like something that has the potential to help a lot of people because like it basically relates around the idea that a lot of us uh, our pH levels aren't really particularly balanced and we don't get enough like potassium in our diet so the space light which is like this uh, mineral powder that you can like dilute in water is something that is going to like help make you more healthy on multiple levels and uh, it's going to help balance out your pH levels as like a potassium. It's not just a potassium supplement, like there's more to it than that and that's what I'm saying. Like this is something that Joe can come onto the show and explain at another time. But if you watch the documentary, which you can do after you've uh, listened to this episode, and I'd highly suggest it because I put a lot of work into it. It's like a one-hour standalone documentary. It, it introduces myself, it introduces Joe, it introduces you to Spacelight, and it's uh, really entertaining, uh, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. So check out Journey to the West, and uh, know this Joe is not uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, though I may I may run into him someday. Like, I, I think he's a... Uh, He's a pretty cool guy, actually, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, maybe that maybe that's the topic for another day. So, but anyways, check out Journey to the West. Check out that documentary. Get an idea of what I'm talking about, and just check out some of the past work I've done, and get an idea of who uh, who Joe is and who's and what Spacelight is, because it's it's quite possible, it's quite very likely that I'll be having them on into on the show in a future episode. So. With where we are at now, um, let's see, 15 minutes into the show, and Jen is not here, so I'm going to bring on Ian, since I know he is patiently waiting, and we're going to get right into our topic. So the topic that we had lined up tonight is based around Ian's personal experiences with schizophrenia. So without needing to say too much more about that, let's just bring Ian onto the show, and then we'll see where the conversation goes from there. So Ian... If you're ready, I am going to bring you onto the show. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey, yeah. Brendan, how's it going? Good, man. Good to hear you. All right. So you're you're on your phone right now, right? Yeah, I'm on my phone. Okay, cool, man. All right. So thanks a lot for doing this. Um, now it's interesting. Like me and you, uh, we go back quite a while, uh, just in terms of now. Oh, hold on. We actually met because of Joe. I just yeah, we did. I, I was going to mention that, actually. Put me in contact with you through Facebook. And then, like, we haven't actually run into each other in person yet. But it will. No. <laughs> like, we're only, uh, yeah, you're you're just, like, a little bit north of me in terms of, like, uh, you're up in, are you up in, Bran where are you right now, Lindsay or Brantford? Well, uh, my original home is Brampton, but I'm up in Lindsay for school right now. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. And then my, my buddy Matt from London, met up with you, and then you guys were doing, like, Paradigm Shifty stuff in, in Lindsay and everything, so... That was yeah, for sure. World. Cool. All right, man. Well, that said, uh, there's, like, a lot of information that I'm sure you can you can bring on to the show tonight from your personal experience. I, first off, like, how would you define the term schizophrenia, and, like, how does that relate to, like, this theme of consciousness? Um, all right, so... Basically, the medical definition of schizophrenia, um, can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, you don't, just try not to, I think it's a little loud, so just maybe move the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so, okay. all right. so um, the medical definition of schizophrenia is actually a, a chemical imbalance in your brain, and it's apparently caused by an overload of dopamine, which basically causes you to hallucinate, just almost like... Um, sort of like psychoactive drugs or whatever, like similar to possibly cocaine or just various other um, things that can cause you to hallucinate. But um, for me and from what I've personally experienced, um, I can just say that it's so much more than just like a, these apparent chemical transactions in your brain, right? And like that's what science is all about is sort of compartmentalizing things and just really um, putting things into packages that fit our, like, small understanding of the way things are. And um, so, yeah, for me, it's just been, like, uh, just a totally, like, mind-opening experience. And that's where I think I really started to grow spiritually is when... I sort of started having these uh, schizophrenic episodes, basically. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, go, like, going back, like, how young were you when these episodes started? Um, I was uh, 
I was about 17, and I had my first uh, technical psychosis at 18. And um, basically, so I can sort of break down what that means. Or So um, when I was about 17, like, I was... I smoked pot and uh, I tried um, magic mushrooms uh, once. And um, so if if you have never experimented sort of with either meditation or mind-altering substances, it may be hard to imagine what it's like. But basically how it all began is um, I pretty much, it, what it felt like I started, when I think back about it, it was almost like I started following my intuition more and more. And um, basically to the point where, like, I was, like, just really listening to my inner self. And uh, it's funny, one of the common themes with schizophrenics is that they all always think they're the reincarnation of Christ, basically. And they always, it's it's a strange thing, like, to think that this is some medical condition where, people think they're Jesus all the time or whatever. It's kind of funny, but, um, yeah, basically, like, uh, so what's, what kind of, like, the modern spiritual teachings sort of are right now is that we are all sort of, like, the reincarnation of God coming through, and that's sort of our path is to realize it as ourselves. But, so with all this happening, or, um, getting sidetracked here, but, um, so I basically started following my intuition more and more, and it started coming to the point where I, I did have this sort of, like, um, inkling in myself that, like, I'm I'm sort of some reincarnation of something, and that um, we're sort of spiritual beings, and everything started becoming very, um, uh, like, godlike almost, like, very mystical in a way, and that's another thing with um, schizophrenics is they become very sort of like not really religious but everything sort of seems mystical to a lot of them and um part of that also is um i started losing fear of a lot of things and that's sort of what i mostly mean by following my intuition is i basically was losing fear of like mm. just uh walking up to people and talking to them on the street or like yeah, yeah just all sorts of stuff like that like i remember um I started being known as sort of like the crazy kid at school. I basically, um, I, uh, I, I remember one day I took a sort of a television stand out of a portable and I brought it across the street and I stood up on it and I was like surfing this thing down this, uh, path in this park and like people are like watching and going like, what the hell is that guy doing and stuff. And so those are like the sorts of behaviors that, I just really started like losing fear of what people thought yeah. and like yeah it was just a really wild experience basically and so with that happening like it basically built up to this one point where um at it was basically grade 12 prom after party or whatever and um I basically um went along with the show and Unfortunately for lots of young people, they think that obliterating themselves through alcohol is something that's actually fun, which, of course, it's not. Um, so I just went along with it and got super drunk for three days and stuff. And um, a few days later, I was uh, basically at school again and sort of recuperating and whatnot. And basically, I just sort of snapped into this, what uh, doctors would call a psychosis. And um, what I was feeling, basically, is just, like, really strange thoughts. So I thought, um, like, I was going to be ridiculed for various things which, like, weren't really true. And, like, I thought um, at one point, me and my friends were playing hacky sack, and I sort of stepped out of the circle, and I basically... Uh, sat down on the grass and I thought the whole entire school was going to come outside and start pointing at me and like uh, just r ridiculing me for various things, right? And um, I tried to shake it off, basically. And um, so my girlfriend at the time noticed that something was up with me and I wasn't all right and I told her I was fine and stuff. So um, I thought I'd try to walk it off. And so... 
um, I was walking basically down Main Street in my town or whatever, and um, <clears throat> with the whole losing fear thing, like, you sort of lose a bit of sight of, like, social norms and what's acceptable and what's not. So pretty much um, I was uh, walking down the street and I seen these guys doing construction on their house, uh, like putting in eavesdrops and stuff like that. And so one of their doors was open and I basically just like thought like, oh, like I've always found it to be interesting that like what, how other people live. So I'm just going to go mm. walk into this person's house. And, oh, man. Uh, yeah, bad news. Walk into this person's house and he came out and was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, get out of here and stuff. And uh, I, I'm literally like, it's, it's, it's weird to imagine, but like, the best way I can describe it is if it's as if someone sort of slipped something in your drink and you had no idea. So like people who use mind altering substances like marijuana or ayahuasca or whatever, they always know that they're doing it and they have the intent to go behind it. So with schizophrenia, no one really knows about what's happening and it, you, it's like you're just dropped into it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I walked into this guy's house and, um, not thinking basically about social norms and what's acceptable and um <coughs> sorry and uh he basically called the cops and um I was found like a bit down the street like after I left and uh, I basically got arrested and uh was brought to jail and didn't I, because of my unsure mental status I wasn't able to get out for two and a half months and so Basically, I was three, 18 years old in three months, and I wound up in uh, adult jail basically for two and a half months. And during the beginning of that stage, um, for about a week, I was, or for two weeks total, but for about a week when I was in solitary confinement, I, uh, like, my sort of schizophrenic episode was really, like, getting into hyperdrive, I guess you could say. And um, it's pretty, like, it's mind-blowing to me, but uh, th that's where I really had a lot of um, spiritual realizations and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. if, if people are familiar with uh, Bruce Lipton's work, he talks a lot about how um, sort of like um, as above, so below, and like uh, fractals and stuff like that, and how like mm -hmm. we are sort of the the cells in the body of the earth basically and i i was having all these weird um like hallucinations that i was a cell inside a human body and basically yeah, that body was the earth and like just all sorts of really bizarre strange thoughts were coming into my mind and like i was basically just tripping out and uh yeah it was just a really profound experience and i can elaborate on it more and but basically, uh, during that time, I was actually, uh, like, what I believe to be teleported into sort of another dimension, although my physical body may have remained in that jail cell or whatever. And uh, mm -hmm. just all all sorts of other really strange, bizarre things were happening. Yeah, and I, and I think we'll have to we'll have to sort of tiptoe our way into those other stories that, that you do have. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that that was cool, man. Like that, I think that's like the longest time that I've just like been able to like listen to someone else on the talk on the show just talk without me having to like want to interrupt or anything. Because I am like really, I'm I'm totally interested in hearing that. Because I mean, that's the thing, you know. Like I'm not schizophrenic. I I I don't know schizophrenia from the point of being schizophrenic myself. But mm -hmm. at the same time, um, there is this idea of you know like now. You've, you're interested, like in Terence McKenna. You're familiar with Terence McKenna, and 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 he yeah. even he even talks about the idea of like you know like maybe we're all schizophrenic, and, and, mm -hmm. and like what technically is schizophrenic, and he and he and he like juxtaposes like schizophrenia to like shamanism, sh you know, sh shamanism, because because yeah. in the past you you would get these uh, in cultures you would get the schizophrenic, which because I mean schizophrenia, even though the the term that we commonly associate with it and. Obviously, you know, at this point, if you've been listening to the show, like, a lot of people might think that, like, schizophrenia, based on their current understanding, is, like, the same thing as multiple personality disorder, but obviously it, it's not. Like, that's technically a different thing. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a totally yeah. separate thing. Yeah, that's a totally separate thing, but a lot of people call, <laughs> like, call multiple personality disorder schizophrenia, so, I mean, right away, they're yeah. just sort of thrown off the path. But, I mean, again, so when you look back at, like, the ancient cultures, you would have tribes and stuff like that, you would still get people who would just naturally be born with this, what we label as schizophrenia. So they would naturally, in, in similar ways that you're talking about, they would have these, like, sensitivities to other energies or, or start having these, like, very uh, higher dimensional psychedelic experiences, so to speak. And then those people were, like, revered as the, you know, as, as the shamans in a lot of cases. Like, they were, like, sort of those who could, like, be a mediator between, like, this world and, and the spirit world beyond sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. like, I think, and, and, and I think, I, and, you know, I'm kind of just talking here, but I think you you have, like, your own understanding, too, that sort of, like, fits fits into line with that. Um, like, I think, I think, especially now in today's day and age, like, do you see your experience, uh, like, do you see yourself being schizophrenic? Would you refer to that as a gift? Um, in in my mind, I, w I would refer to it as a gift because it really has helped me so much in so many ways and just, mm -hmm. like, like, just various details I can go into, sort of, um, some of them are, like, uh, just, well, I guess I just want to back up a bit, but um, when I've, I, referring to your ten, the Terrence McKenna video called uh, Schizophrenic or Shamanic, which is an yeah. awesome video for you guys I'll, to I'll Google or YouTube. Right now. Yep. Okay, nice. Um, when, I, when I first seen that, because I was still trying to make sense of everything, and, um, when I first started watching that video, it almost brought tears to my eyes. Like My eyes welled up because I felt like just so relieved that, like, this wasn't, like, something that was just an accident or something that's negative, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, basically, like, where, where where should I go from here? Like, do you want me to sort of explain my, uh, like, experience more or? Hmm. Um, you know, there's a... I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways to sort of take this in. Okay, okay, let's just go go back a few steps, maybe. Cause, okay. You know, kind of kind of what I was saying, like when, when I sort of said, like Terrence McKenna brought up this idea, like maybe we're all schizophrenic in, in, yeah. in a way, and uh, even even the idea of like maybe you know maybe we're all have like multiple personalities in, in a way. Okay. Too. Yeah. Like like I think that's something that's interesting, and that's something that even someone who hasn't been diagnosed can obviously have an experience like that where. You know, you even think back to the idea of like, uh, you know, the voice on your shoulder, sort of thing, and mm -hmm. then you find yourself mm -hmm. sort of like having some sort of like debate with with yourself, so to speak. Um, now, I guess like that is like that's like part of the natural human experience. I I, I think in in a lot of ways that like mm -hmm. okay okay now again just work 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 with me here because this is a this still fits into the realm of the whole conversation topic in terms of like uh different mental states and consciousness and stuff like that sure. but i had i had this idea once and uh i i walked into a class lecture uh, at the university one time and it wasn't even a class i was in like a friend of mine was in and i just walked into it and it was a psychology class and they were talking uh they showed a video about multiple personality disorder and yeah. at the same time i was going through a lot of like spiritual seeking and trying to like piece together different parts of the puzzle and then i was like hmm okay wait a second because like in the video that they showed like literally the person would be talking and then suddenly like a switch happens and then they're like a different personality like they're like yeah. a, diff a different you know you could almost refer to it as like a different soul like a different driver yeah, like takes sure. control of the wheel of the vehicle you know like, again like this body is a vehicle like a lot of us who are listening to this have sort of we sort of wrapped our minds around that in, in that sense of that like you know call it soul call it whatever we are definitely more than our physical body in terms of like awareness For sure. Business. So this idea that like yes, there's one vehicle, but can there be multiple drivers? And I think that's where uh, when what we label as multiple personality, I think that's like some sort of representation of like I don't want to use the word fact, but of the idea that like multiple souls, multiple drivers can exist like within the same vehicle. And then sometimes we see that, and then sometimes we call it multiple personality disorder. So, I don't know, like do you like what 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 do you think about that? Um I I definitely believe it to be true and I I actually have um a friend who basically uh got in an accident or something like that and they were sort of 
injured for a time and apparently a like a soul apparently came to inhabit them to give their soul a rest and basically like help their soul recover basically and like um they could sort of feel their the other entity's consciousness and I've heard of like I, I have heard of that like sort of uh souls coming to inhabit people during different times to like help share the load or whatever of like being in this yeah. reality and I, I've also heard of some really interesting stuff um regarding that exact same thing on uh, split personalities that um so scientists do a brain scan of when um a person is looking at pictures and certain areas of their brain light up when they have uh the ability to see and then they they know that they're someone with split personalities and they wait for them to actually have their personality change and mm-hmm. as their personality changes the areas that uh like the visual cortex or whatever it may be called uh actually stops lighting up and the they actually turn into a blind person and in their personality they are a blind person and so like literally the brain activity stops for them being able to see just as their personality changes and stuff like that which is pretty interesting for sure when you think about it like it's pretty crazy but um yeah for i know for um schizophrenia like for me i've never sort of been another personality like and that's i guess the sort of big common misperception mm-hmm. is like i've never had my personality change like in any episode or whatever like i've always been myself and like it's just like been various stages of awareness that like lead me to sort of the behavior that society would call strange or Mm -hmm. stuff like that during those times which i haven't had uh episodes for a few years now but yeah for basically five years now so yeah well that's pretty so so there's nothing like like in terms of episodes and stuff like like you're there's nothing that's been happening too recently with you um no it's just been sort of like the period from when i was about 17 to 19 but i i do have some strange sort of things that like once in a while when i uh actually go to sleep at night um occasionally i'll go to close my eyes and i'll basically focus and i'll see like a green light with my eyes closed and I'll focus on that light and start slowly opening my eyes wider and wider. And as that happens, I'll actually see this green light with my eyes open in the room. Mm. And it actually starts morphing around the room just like a, almost like green smoke. And I, I always know, yeah, I always know like and, like and feel that it's something there, like communicating with me and telling me something. But I'm never like quite sure what it is. And sometimes it will form into pictures of various things and stuff like that, but, like, that's, for the most part, like, about as far as it gets for my actual sort of um, hallucinations or mental state, like, for, like, as of now, like, I'm in this sort of solid reality, basically, and, uh, like, one of the things with when I was building up to these episodes, basically, is, um, and it's, I guess... Some people talk about spiritually, like, how um, uh, divi- or getting rid of the divide between f- the feeling of yourself and the rest of the universe, right, to feel at one. And I know when I was building up to all these, like, uh, psychosis, psychosis um, that I actually began to feel lighter and lighter and lighter and almost transparent. And it's it's kind of funny because, like, uh, when you exercise and you eat healthy and stuff, like they say, it raises your vibration and you feel really, like, light and buoyant, basically. And then if you're sad or unhealthy or whatever, you feel really solid and dense, slow, heavy, et cetera. And, uh, yeah, just I basically got to a point where just I felt like there was no separation between my head and the rest of the universe. And, like, one of the things that, uh, like, was mind-blowing to me because I started learning all this information, like, sort of after I experienced it, um, they say that the universe, whatever you're seeing at a present moment is a reflection of your soul, right? And 
the world is a mirror to your surroundings. Well, it came to a point where that basically I was um I was able to sort of see the world as it was happening, but sort of be s- stepped out of it just by like a slight moment to realize that like anything I'm thinking will actually pop up in front of me as it happens or whatever. And it was really just like it like it's it's kind of like you don't know where your bearings are almost cuz like um when you're in this sort of society or world or reality I'm in my room right now and if I'm hungry and I need food I know to go from point A to point B which would be the store and it's a direct path right but when I was in that sort of state where everything I could almost see it happening exactly as I was thinking it like it almost is so much to take in that you're almost lost and you lose that like point A to point B and like you it's almost like you clam up and you could potentially like just go into like a state of like not wanting to do anything or move around anywhere because it was so overwhelming but um yeah it's just really uh crazy and then I was basically after I got out of jail I was unfortunately on house arrest for a bit too not because I was charged with anything but as sorry as direct punishment but as just because uh court trials and stuff especially involved with mental health they take so long to um carry out and basically like I started coming across I think um Greg Braden the Science of Miracles was sort of the first like spiritual video that I kind of watched and then it got into like Bruce Lipton and stuff and from there I just started learning all this like information that just really helped open my mind and like kind of confirm everything that like I was uh learning about with schizophrenia and stuff but, yeah yeah, like, I think it's it's really interesting to think about the idea that, you know, like, all of us are who we are for a reason, and obviously you having these schizophrenic episodes, like, that's that's made you who you are, and, and, and I think mm-hmm. in the same way that, you know, in the same way we sort of touched upon, like, other experiences, so, I mean, when you're talking about, like, psychedelic experiences and stuff, you're, like, being opened to this other energy, this other like awareness, and, and and then you get some cases where people are experiencing these states, and I would refer to them as natural states, like without any sort of like external addition to you know to any like any chemical addition. So I mean, because that's the idea. Like, and we talk about this uh, through deeper states of meditation. Like, you can have these experiences where they're like very psychedelic would be one of the words to describe it so um like yeah like tell me ian like what other stuff uh like as a result of sort of like where the universe has placed you with uh through your schizophrenic experiences and stuff like what other things uh have you like come to learn or what other things are you are you interested in like i mean how um Okay, like one thing in specifically, like how involved are you with like dream expo- exploration? Um, <clears throat> well, I guess uh, to sort of, I don't know. Um, I guess I should explain that just for whoever's listening, that I- I'm sure most people who are listening to the show believe in sort of a higher realm or that there's more to life than we perceive, but. I know for me, like, and I'll, like, anyway, but basically, so I, uh, when when I was growing up, I basically was in a household that sort of was a typical North American, like, doesn't really have any particular belief system, and just basically, I basically didn't believe in God or any higher consciousness or, like, any sort of anything beyond this physical body, right? And it was completely, like, and it was basically devastating, like, and I I know for a lot of people who don't see light at the end of the tunnel and they believe that this body is all there is, they're, like, I've talked to lots of them and they're usually, like, depressed and stuff and down and just not living to their full potential because they, it's just, like, fear of, like, once this body shuts down, like, that's it and I have no more. Mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm. For me, the most profound thing that has really shaped my, like, sort of behavior is basically 
with all those experiences is coming to the realization that there is something beyond this reality and that there's there is so much more out there and um when it comes to dream exploration um it's kind of uh funny you mention that when when I was on house arrest, I basically had sort of nothing to do for a while except for be at home. And so I kind of like, I was still like uh, like a bit down, I guess, about sort of all what was happening and stuff. So I basically would uh, sleep in and stuff like that. And um, when I was like just sort of fresh out of jail and basically on house arrest, uh, I started having, like, the most vivid, intense dreams of my entire life, basically, and, like, uh, dreams to this day that I still haven't haven't almost been as real as those. And just, um, I don't particularly, like, uh, focus that much on dreaming, like, during my everyday life. Like, I do have dreams occasionally, and I... I try to write them down sometimes, and sometimes I forget before I get to and stuff, but just I know, like, um, uh, sort of lying down on your back, it, like, really helps amplify your dreaming capacity for sure. And, uh, but, yeah, I haven't personally done too much dreaming exploration Mm -hmm. on that front. Okay. No, no, that's cool. I mean, yeah, but, you know, it's something I think all of us wish we could uh, sort of commit more to, <laughs> to be honest. Sure. Uh, it's, sure. it's, it's one of those things that we're constantly, um, and just, just, you know, a practical tip for those of you who are interested in dream exploration. We've talked about this before in past episodes, but one of the quickest ways to get in the habit of like exploring your dreams is to be able to remember them more. And one of the best ways to remember them is to adapt the habit of writing them down, even when they don't seem important. Um, Cause oftentimes like, you know, that's like a test. You'll have like a really like, mundane dream and then you'll be like oh well that was stupid so i'm not obviously not going to bother writing it down but like that whole process of like thinking it's pointless and not writing it down just means that like you're not going to remember the next dream in the same way so you have to write down those mundane dreams in order to like start building that memory so that you will eventually be able to have like the more in-depth dreams and be able to document them as well um yeah just a little side tip there in terms of lucid dreaming stuff. I know everyone's always interested in that. But Ian, one of the, uh, you know, in, in terms of like one of the, like big realizations of this reality and everything, um, for, for, me, for me at least, and, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this as well in terms of like how maybe you, you like came to realize it in your own way or whether or not you do, but it's a simple idea that, and you already sort of touched upon this, but, but like that like death is not the end in, in, in a sense. Um, you know, like this idea that, like, yeah, like there is more than uh, like what sort of mainstream culture is telling us. You know, you get this idea of like YOLO and stuff, which I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I just feel like that was like, uh, you know, like propaganda, like anti-Buddhist oh, sure. propaganda or something. You know, like encouraging these kids to uh, just sort of like spend all their time just doing stupid stuff or whatever. But um, so you know, the the alternative to that is like, it's like no, like you do live more than once and like there is more experience to uh to like this life beyond what we sort of refer to as death but yeah like what um do you do you have something that you can add in terms of that of like your perception of uh what we sort of define as death um yeah definitely um i i know um i'll i'll get into sort of uh uh one second sorry yeah when I was in jail, like, basically in solitary confinement and, like, at the peak of my sort of uh, height of, like, psychosis, I um, I <clears throat> basically, what I believe was teleported into another uh, reality or place. And uh, the purpose of that teleportation was I actually, um, I, I wound up on um, a cold steel table and I was naked in this other realm or place and um basically it's it's it would sound pretty scary but um I was uh sorry one sec just technical difficulty one sec sorry. No problem. Yeah I just had to plug my phone in so it wouldn't die on me. But um 
so yeah, I was basically teleported, and um, I ended up in this totally pitch black, dark room on a cold and steel table, butt naked, and it was it was the scariest, most like the freakiest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And basically, it sounded like there's hallways in this room and uh, almost like cement walls. And all I could hear was echoing laughter. And, uh, um, yeah, so I, uh, I woke up, I woke up there and I basically stepped off the steel table and I thought to myself, like, I can either stay here or I can, like, starve, basic or I can stay here and starve or I can venture out into a sort of unknown, basically. And, um... As I was doing that, I was feeling my way around the table and, like, trying to get a grip on, like, where I was and stuff. And as I let go of the table, um, basically, I just heard, like, all sort of, like, uh, I guess what would be described as, like, my space parents and, like, their friends and, like, uh-huh. sort of, sort of like, these soul families or something. Like, I've heard right. that we all have a separate soul in, like, different dimensions and stuff like that. And... um they all yelled at the same time, happy birthday, like, as loud as they could. And I was, like, it startled me. I remember being, like, freaked. And uh, I was just, like, like, what do you guys mean? What do you mean it's my birthday or whatever? And uh, as I let go of the table, they were, like, today's the day you've lost fear of living. And it just, like, shocked me. I was, like, wow, like, like because I basically chose, like, I'm either going to be in a fearful state and just stay on this sort of table as a metaphor, or I'm going to go into the world and just explore it and love it and be happy in it, right? And um, as I did that and as I left the table, uh, like, I I sort of got teleported back into my, um, like, jail cell reality, and that's almost when sort of my psychosis basically ended and, like, I just sort of snapped out of everything and went back Hmm. into a normal state from there. But, like, there's lots of uh, stories before that, too. But, um, yeah, that was sort of, like, the pinnacle peak of my whole uh, schizophrenic experience, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 like, do you feel that, um, you know, some people might just sort of be like, oh, well, that was just my imagination. But, like, rather the alternative is, like, do you feel that, like, those... Uh, other like would you recognize those as like actual other entities that you're communicating with like, uh, feel sure. like that oh for sure definitely and like like the the thing with some with some schizophrenics they don't know like what is the difference between um like this reality and the next or just like how um some people like they they can't tell what was them being awake and what was a dream like sort of when they just wake up and for me like with with all my episodes like I always know sort of when I am stepping into another realm and like or seeing something of another type of consciousness or whatever and when I was there I basically it was as real as this reality like for all you listeners at home or even you um if you just tap your desk with your knuckles and feel the solidity of that, like, that's how real that sort of teleportation was, mm-hmm. like, the best way I can describe it. Like, it was solid. It was, I I, I was in this actual reality 100%, and uh, it's just, it's, it seems crazy, but it's just, I don't know, it is what it is, I guess, right? But Yeah, and and that's that's valuable information to share, man. Like that's that's exactly uh, what I think Paradigm Shift Radio is about: is sort of creating like a database and a log of these different visceral experiences that a lot of us have had at some point in our lives that sort of go outside the box uh, in in terms of like what we would sort of be ex- what we would expect to even be possible in the first place. But you know that that's what we need. So I thank you again, Ian, for for being able to like share some of that experience on the show um now it, it's pretty cool man because you, you sort of uh, you sort of talked about this earlier like this whole idea of like this loss of fear in, in a lot of ways and you're going out and you're like sort of doing things and talking to people in ways whereas like your ego if you want to call it that might have like stopped you in the past and yeah and, um 
you know, so maybe this whole schizophrenic thing had, had to do a lot with like the dissolving of the ego for you, for you personally. Um, but what I, what I was going to get to, um, just in terms of like paradigm shift and community stuff, like I, re- I really like what you've done. You can tell me more about this. But you were one of the first people who uh, we were who I was communicating with who was like already going out and leaving cool, interesting, thought provoking messages like around their community. Uh, like you were like leaving like posters up in places or like doing sidewalk chalk. And I, I know. Uh, you, you actually have like a chalkboard outside your house, and you like write yeah. like new a new thought on it or something every day. So I think uh, tell us tell us more about that. What other ways have you sort of like tried planting the seeds in, in culture? Yeah, um, for sure. Like I, I guess as a, like um, I started becoming more and more open minded. I basically um, I just like you you can only sit in your house and go on the internet so much, right, until you, and, and read about sort of how much we need to change until you're just like, okay, well, what's stopping me from doing it? Like, I may not know the logistics of, um, like, uh, sort of helping to get a cargo shipment of food from here to a poor country or something, but, like, I can hopefully gain enough momentum to sort of help everyone to want to do something like that, right? So, basically, um, I started uh, just getting leftover labels from work, like sort of blank white stickers, and just uh, writing like different quotes and messages and thoughts and pictures and stuff on them, and actually just sticking them all over like street poles uh, in Brampton where I'm from. And uh, a lot of people would like notice them, and like sort of after I'd put them up for a while, like I'd sort of uh, stay there, like sit on a bench or something, and just watch people walk by and like read them and stuff. And, um, so yeah, I just I just have always wanted to like uh sort of spread awareness and like sort of the good light of the world, right? And uh part of I think what has ha- helped me want to do that sort of stuff is just like when I was a kid I uh watched a lot of nature shows and they'd always sort of uh talk about how yeah, nature is beautiful but it's being taken away by sort of uh construction and all that sort of stuff. So it, it put that like moral sense of duty into me at an early age that, like, we got to do something, basically. So, um, yeah, so, like, yeah, I I had leftover plexiglass uh, from a lizard tank that I had quite a while ago, and uh, I I remembered that uh, they seeing a chalkboard paint in stores once at, like, Home Hardware or something, so I went and I got some, and I've, I've now got, like, two... I guess about four by four uh, plexiglass chalkboards that I sort of just made up, um, posted right outside my house, and every day, or mostly every day, there's a couple days it rains and stuff and the chalk gets washed off, but I usually try to keep, like, inspiring um, or informative messages on those chalkboards at all times, and, like, it's just such a simple thing that we can do that just, it's, we have no idea how far it can reach out into the community, right? And uh, mm-hmm. I've seen people stop and get out of their cars and uh, take pictures of them with their cell phones. And, oh, uh, cool. Yeah, it, that's like the most rewarding thing to me is uh, when someone does something like that, right? And um, the other day I was sitting out there actually just uh, chilling in the backyard basically and I I could see this car slowed down and stopped right in front of the signs and was just reading them for uh, quite a while and uh, I put I put up messages on aliens like I put messages up about the Pleiadians um, right now with Halloween and stuff um, I've been putting up information on uh, like how candy is carcinogenic and stuff but like I'll also try to like especially um, apparently Hershey's candy and stuff like that has GMOs in it and stuff and uh, but I'll try to put positive messages on there as well so underneath I put a recent Harvard study has shown that like hemp can uh, cure cancer and stuff like that just to balance it out but yeah there's just there's infinite numbers of ways to um like put consciousness out there and to get it out there so that people can just easily pick up on it right cuz we all feed off of uh sort of each other's love in in a way not in a bad way but in a way that like just like um when you're playing a sport or something or hobbies when someone else does something awesome like it gets you pumped up and then you 
get pumped and somebody else gets pumped and it just keeps yeah. escalating, right? Until we just yeah. like just like fly away. We float into space at that <laughs> point, right? Once we're all super pumped and psyched on life, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna happen, man. We're just gonna float away. That's yeah. exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah, so I think you're, I think you're you're right though. It, it's about building morale. Um, that's what a lot about a lot of this stuff is about, it, it, as well as like you know this radio show, like paradigm shift stuff, like spirit sign stuff. Like it's about like empowerment in, in a lot of ways, and like realizing mm-hmm. how much more potential like, like we actually have to like create within this reality. So I mean, yeah, you can either be passive. Or you can be like our buddy Ian here, who is like out there, like making a difference in the world. So for all of you who are listening, I hope what his story, uh, has, what he shared with us today, and just in the last part, I hope that can empower and inspire more people to find interesting, creative ways to like start getting conscious ideas out into their communities, and possibly even consider starting up a paradigm shift community. Because if you're interested in that, go to the Facebook.com/slash Paradigm Shift Central, and there's some tips and tricks there. So I'll just do that standard plug, but. Um, I was going to say, Ian, would you like to, uh, well, are, are you okay, like, being on? We got, like, another half hour for the show. Do you want to stick around after the meditation? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. After the meditation, I think, I think we'll get into some, some interesting, uh, stuff. Like, I mean, you know, like, like, I'd, I'd even just like to maybe, like, get your take on some, I mean, you mentioned, like, Palladians or, and UFOs and stuff like that. Like, maybe we should just sort of touch upon that just while we still got you on the air, so... Um, but what I was going to say before we get into our meditation, guys, if you would like to be involved with the draw for the three days of light all access pass, this is still possibly your last chance to do it. So if you have not yet, send a message to the facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio page and just tell us that you would like to be entered in the draw because we'll be doing the draw at the end of the show and uh, we'll have two names from that and then those two people will be contacted and they'll get their all access passes. So again, go to 3dlgathering.com and check out Three Days of Light and uh, it's pretty exciting stuff, needless to say. So um, Ian, now when we do our meditation, would... uh, would you like to, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll offer it to you. Would you like to lead us into a meditation? Is that something you're comfortable with? Um, I can try, sure. I'm, I'm sort of a newbie at meditation, but in some ways I'm experienced as well. But, uh, right. yeah, sure, I'm I'm down. Yeah, okay, that, that, that'd be cool. Yeah, sort of like be that, you know, uh, schizophrenic shamanic guy <laughs> for, if you don't mind. So. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so for everyone who's listening, as you know, we usually do this within the show. We have our meditation at the top of the hour as we sort of transition from another Psychic Saturday into Sunday. So Ian, will uh, will set you up for it, and then we'll uh, cue the music, and then that will go for about five minutes, and then we'll come back. And we'll still be on the air with Ian, but I will say if anybody else would like to join us on the air Please feel free to call in either using Skype or the uh, or the actual number, and you can dial that through your phone. So the number is three four seven five three nine five four nine three. That's three four seven five three nine five four nine three. Or like I said, just call in with Skype, and we'll be able to see that you're in the queue. And yeah, we we'd like to do that. We can do that. We can bring on a third person for the last half hour of the show as we sort of just uh, take things where they need to go. But, uh, all right, as we got everything in check, okay, uh, Ian, how are you feeling? Are you, uh, can I just hand this over to you? Are you ready to sort of take us? Sure, sure, take yeah. Um, journey, yeah? I'm down, I'll, I'll do, I'll go from my heart, like. Yeah. All right. All right. Totally, man. All right, so as everybody gets comfortable, I'm handing it off to you. So, Ian, it's, uh, it's all up to you, and just let me know when you want the music to play. Okay, thanks. So, um... couple deep breaths to sort of relax yourself and uh, really just it's all about remembering who we are and um, if we can remember that we are pure love and consciousness to let go of anything that is in your life and is holding your back holding you back parents saying you're not good enough at school uh, friends who sometimes can be mean anything just remember that we are here in a good place to love each other and to experience the beauty and the wonder that this life has to share for us and feel in your heart go through 
your chakras, your energy centers, and just feel the energy flowing through in love and just remember that you are a divine being and you can feel love wherever you go and that you're always safe because the soul cannot deconstruct. It's not going to biodegrade. It's forever. It's light. It's love. It's uh, peace. And um, feel that rising up in you and just know that and hold that in your heart always wherever you go. And you'll be able to face any situation. Just breathe and remember. Remember where we come from. The stars and the light and the love of the world. (sighs) Brendan, you can cue the music if you'd like.
of keeping the words that Ian shared with us very close to your heart, remembering who we are, where we came from, and what we're here to do. Just take another deep, mining, mindful, meaningful breath, and as you're at your own pace, gently return yourself to the awareness of the room around you. All right, so as we transition our way back into this reality. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to bring Ian back onto the air, and we're going to continue our discussion. So, Ian, Ian, you're with us? Yep, I am. Cool, cool. All right, thanks, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for doing that. I think uh, that introduction you gave was very well done, actually, and, and, and you could feel it. It was very, like, from the heart. So... Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So with uh, about 20 minutes left in the show, uh, if someone else would like to call in right now to sort of take part in this conversation, maybe you have some uh, own insight and experiences related to the original root uh topic of schizophrenia, feel free to call in within the last 20 minutes, and you're welcome to join us on the air as we sort of do that. Um, now, without – yeah, let's maybe not get too, too far off the topic – uh, Ian, is there anything just in the in terms of like going back to the original topic of schizophrenia? Is there anything else that you feel that people should be able to understand or know about it? Um, sure. Uh, well, for me, for my own interpretation of it, um, like I think it really comes down to the whole letting go of fear thing again, and like like they say like um with what 2012 is all about is embracing sort of like the higher dimension and the next step up for us is apparently the fifth dimension and re-entering into that dream sort of world. And when I was in that those sorts of uh, schizophrenic states, I I basically, um, I, I, I was in the dream world during those times and like that that's the only way I can describe it. And like there were times where I be in a sort of more solid reality, but there were also times where, like, I could be just walking down the street and uh, I could see someone looking at me and their face would just, like, literally turn into another person completely. Like, I uh, I once seen, um, uh, like, someone walking by and just she turned into, like, an older person that I'd seen somewhere else before and it was just so bizarre. Like, it's just, how reality will just loosen up and um but i guess like my advice that i can sort of offer is like i know a lot of us and i've had this discussion with like lots of people is just we get so excited and so pumped on life and like we're ready to do so much like like i know lots of people are so creative we have all these ideas and things of how we can help the world and make a difference and just all love each other better. And then I know for me, like, I, I was sort of like that, but I wasn't grounded enough to actualize it. And I would get to this super high place in terms of, like, just mentally being super stimulated and creative, like, and burst into these schizophrenic episodes. But because I had no, like, grounding or no base, I couldn't really use my energy for good and what mm -hmm. I mean by that is um, just like sort of disorganization so like you come into your room and you're so excited to do something that you sort of tear open all your drawers and there's stuff everywhere and then you're tripping on the way out of the door right because you've created mm -hmm. such a mess that like you almost can't get through it b because of your excitement like, like right. it's not using it focused and clear right so I I just what I, what I'm really trying to learn now, and um, someone has been helping me with this tremendously, is that is just to be grounded and to be centered. And I never knew what that meant, but really feeling sort of your root chakra and feeling that you are safe and that you do have time to complete different things, because like sort of the deal with me was like my mind was always. Um, 
just racing with like new ideas and stuff and the only sort of things I could carry out were easy tasks like going downtown and writing uh, on the sidewalk with chalk and stuff because like it doesn't take a lot of like planned sort of carrying through of the idea it's kind of mm-hmm. like it comes and it goes right but now sort of like what I'm learning is to try to really focus that energy to keep it whole in your body and when you, when you know that you're safe and that you feel that you're safe you don't have to rush and you don't have to worry about getting to the next sort of thing and you can mm-hmm. focus and carry out these really long term amazing goals that of course the more energy and work you put into it the more it can pay off right so not to keep ourselves focused on the future but to be in the present by always focusing on now and realizing that now is all you need and that there will be a tomorrow is such a key important like step into how to organize your life in terms of getting things done and just knowing that you have the confidence to carry out the actions that you believe should be done and stuff so yeah yeah i I think a lot of us uh again going back to this idea of like letting go of fear a lot of us do get caught up in the fear um you know there's a lot of stuff that we got going on in our lives a lot of personal stuff and and it's not always easy to deal with but i think one thing that you sort of come to realize and, and maybe you know a good portion of the people who are listening to this right now legitimately understand this and more coming into understanding it but it's this idea of that whatever may come our way we will be okay and I know mm-hmm. that rhymes so maybe that will help you remember <laughs> it so again whatever whatever may come our way we will be okay and that's understanding that sometimes you know we'll have to deal with the things that are not easy to deal with and things may not always go the way that we would ideally like them to go but nevertheless there's a reason that they're going in the way they are and you know sometimes that may involve like the free will of other people which can get very confusing from your personal perspective but it's just something that i think um again sort of going back to what you're saying it, 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 if you can understand this it helps get rid of this fear so that you can go out there and you can really start taking control of your life and really start using the energy in more efficient like effective ways so, you know like the simple idea of like of energy goes where your attention or energy flows where your attention goes and, and i think that's kind of like one of the big themes that we can sort of maybe like get out of this lesson uh that we've been having today so very very cool stuff um Okay, so let's see. We got 13 minutes left in the show. Now, nobody else has dialed in, so it's just kind of us here for the last few minutes now. Um, but one thing I did sort of want to touch upon, Ian, while you're still here, and I think this is just something that maybe will come up in a future episode of the show, uh, is this idea of like the veil between realities becoming thinner. Uh, it, whether it yeah. be from a personal perspective or something that's actually happening on like a global like matrix grid sort of thing. Like when you were talking about walking down the street and like being able to see somebody's face like morph into another face, you know, like a lot a lot of people would just be like, oh well, that's obviously you just hallucinating, so to speak, right? So it's not mm-hmm. actually real. But like, or the alternative is that like your vision is sort of like seeing something like, you know, the filters are sort of opening up even just for a brief moment and you're seeing something that is actually there. And and it's this idea that, you know, like maybe each one of us has like multiple like faces that we sort of carry with us. And, And I think this is a, a lot of people might be sort of freaked out by this idea, but you can even relate this to um, if you try meditating in the mirror and you and you like look at yourself in the mirror and you soften your gaze, like your face will like start morphing in, in, in a very um, no, I can't say it's the exact way that you would see it, but but that's just an interesting thing that people here can try experiencing themselves is, is sort of do that and sort of like let reality sort of soften and and, and when it does. Uh, you, you start to see, like, other, you know, you could refer to them as, like, other entities and stuff. So, I mean, a lot of, you know, again, like, the veil sort of becomes thinner, and you, and you start to see uh, other aspects of the world around you, so to speak. Um, now, okay, before we sort of wrap up here, Ian, uh, in, in in that sense, and kind of going back to your story where you're talking about where you, like, have this experience with these other entities, uh, have there been other experiences where you felt like the presence of entities that, um, weren't just like another human being, like whether it be sort of like paranormal or like Sasquatch or something. 
Um, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I've never had any run-ins with Sasquatch, but uh, yeah. I, I definitely feel like I have come into contact with uh, aliens twice in my life. And uh, it's, it's funny, I tell this to some of my friends, and they all laugh and stuff and say, okay, sure thing. But, um, yeah, one day I was actually at my house on my couch, and uh, I was lying down having a nap. And uh, I sort of had my arm above my head, kind of like, just like how you would if you had your arms back lying down or whatever. And um, I, I felt like I... I just heard this, like, like I know it sounds so cliche and stuff, but, like, the sort of classic, like, UFO beaming down kind of noise. And I heard this noise, and basically I could feel it, too, like, almost, like, vibrating in my chest, just like a big beam or whatever it is. And uh, I, I immediately knew it was aliens. Like, I just felt that, like, these are, it was aliens, and... uh I felt like this like weird thing almost like like now I couldn't see there anything but I almost felt like a device almost like lock into my armpit or underarm and uh I at that point I was like I was almost ready to start freaking out but at, at this point in time like it was a few years ago and I'm sort of like uh spiritually getting more developed and stuff and like like having faith in the universe etc and uh, I was just like okay like I trust that you people, whatever you're doing, are, or entities are good beings, but I'm just going to say today I'm not ready for this at this moment, so I'm just going to please ask like that you guys leave, and if you guys are going to do something cool, then like, please just come back another time. I'll remember, and I'll be ready, right? And so that literally, as I said that in my head, I just felt it disperse or like go away, basically. And... Um, and then a few years later, I was at my friend's house before a party, and I was just sort of taking a nap. And uh, I was on the couch in the basement again, and I just felt like I felt again like this sort of tractor beam or whatever it was, sort of coming down and locking onto my head. And this time, I couldn't I couldn't really hear it or anything, but um, I felt it sort of lock into my head, and I had my eyes closed, and somehow as if like my brain was like in space I basically just felt like I, I just got the message like you're going to get information right now and like I, I still to this day like I may be using it but I don't really know what it was but like I just got the message you're going to get information right now and just like bear with us or something and I yeah. literally felt, I felt like my the inside of my head like my brain was just time warping through space at like billions of miles per hour and I could like I know there's apparently no wind in space or whatever but I could feel like just like like almost like exactly what you picture like um when um like Star Trek like time warps or whatever something mm -hmm. like that right and uh I basically was holding on in my head and just like feeling this sort of motion or whatever going by and um and then basically it sort of subsided and they were just like, okay, like you're good to go. And like, I just sort of, uh, like I just snapped back and basically that was it. And like, I, I haven't had any sort of, uh, yeah. alien presence or anything since, but yeah, it was pretty trippy for sure. But like, if you, if you keep your mind open to those sorts of things, like you never know what could happen or who's watching out for you or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, totally, man. Like, I mean, yeah, that's, like, that's some pretty visceral stuff, and, and again, it's not, like, a positive or negative thing, but, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely something, so, I, yeah, if you have no fear going into it, like, I, you know, kind of even what you're saying, like, maybe there was some sort of exchange of information, and maybe the whole point was that you weren't supposed to be able to, like, remember it all right away, but maybe there, if there was something that happened there, then maybe it's, like, that information is still with you, but you're going to, like, come into learning it or come into remembering it, like, over time, so I, I think that's a, just another way of looking at it. But um, for sure. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, so there's about eight minutes left on the show, and there is another person who I'd like to bring on the air in a minute. But before we do that, uh, just so we're not ra rushing it like the last second, like we did last time, we are going to do the three DL draw for the two all access passes that we have left. So, Ian, are you, you want to help me pump this up, maybe with like a little drum roll or something? So, sure. Uh, okay. Let's go. And, and again, we're.
we're, we're leaving this down to like this is very okay. Hold on, hold the drum roll. Just so everyone knows, okay. this is very like this is very uh, synchronistic how we're doing this. Like all I've done, I've written down the names and and I've actually got the names like in a singing bowl right now. So like I, all I'm doing is like drawing two names in the same way that you would be like drawing tarot cards or something. So again, like this is leaving it up to synchronicity. So. All right, no bias or anything. Okay, so I'm fishing for them right now. So, Ian, give me a little bit of drum roll. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but taps my fingers or whatever. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Okay. okay, so I got my two names. And the first name, um, whether or not they're listening, I'm not entirely sure. The first name is uh, Brendan Bliss something. I think it's the last name that I wrote down. So, Brendan is the first name, then that's not me, obviously. And the <laughs> second person the second person is Marley. So, congratulations to Brendan and Marley. I'll be messaging you guys on uh, Facebook, and even if you're not listening live on the show right now, you'll get the message and you'll find out. And if for whatever reason uh, maybe one of them decides that they're not able to go, then we may be doing a draw uh, just like shortly after this. So, if so, there may still be like a random chance for somebody else to still get one but again congratulations to brendan and marley for getting your all access passes and that again is to three days of light conscious festival and retreat happening very soon go to 3dlgathering.com and for those who are going there we will see you there at least i myself will so all right with uh six minutes left on the show we are going to bring on i believe it's a Z- uh, it's not Zoe. It's like Zoe. Uh, their full name is like Zoe Kaga Malad Malad Maldonado. Yeah, I probably butchered that. So, anyways, we're we're gonna bring them on, and we're just. Uh, I think this is probably relating maybe to the topic of schizophrenia. So, with five minutes left on the show, uh, we're bringing you on right now. Hello, is this? Uh, z- sorry, or, can you tell us your name? Can you hear us? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi. Cool, cool. Sorry, how do you pronounce your name, and where are you calling from? Um, you pronounce it Zoe. Um, I won't get into okay. my last name. <laughs> <All right, laughs> and perfect. I'm calling from New York, um, not the city, upstate New York. Cool, cool. Uh, All right, so Zoe, uh, thank you for calling in. What What would you like to add to the show here tonight? Um, well, I don't really have much perspective on schizophrenia, but okay. at one point you guys were talking about dreaming. Yeah. And exploring your dreams. And, yeah. And, um, yeah. I happen to love, love, love lucid dreaming. Um, I pretty much try every day. And that, that's, how's it working for you? Uh, hold on, there's like a bit of static or something. Oh, oh, oh my, my, uh, my, my mic's probably breaking up. It does this once an episode. Or something. Zoe, Zoe, can you hear me very well at all? Um, I can hear you, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Ian, if you can hear me, just talk to talk Zoe, Zoe about your music dream. Just have, just have the conversation. My mic's kind of breaking up. Uh, I can barely hear, actually. But you guys, but you guys can probably hear each other. Hello. Oh, Hello? yeah, that's better. Hey. Hello. Okay. Hello? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can, can you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but it's really fuzzy. It's like super. Uh, I think we're, like we're feedback or something. Okay. All right. Well, well, I, well, I think it might just be temporary. So, so um, uh, how are we? How are we right now? Uh, we have. I can't even hear you right now, Brendan. I can just hear oh, okay. like. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Ian, I'm typing to you. Yeah, I just want to hear from Zoe. Zoe, you can hear me. Zoe, just a little bit more, a little bit more. If you can, you can hear me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. So what about uh, hello? What about lucid dreaming? Like, how do you do you often lucid dream or? Um, yeah, I've had many lucid dreaming experiences, and they've, they've been pretty amazing. Like, I can't even begin to explain uh, the beautiful places that I've been to, and the beautiful things I've seen, and the beautiful people I've talked to. Um. 
And so, so okay, can you guys hear me now? My mic fix itself. It, it's I still can. really fuzzy, but I, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, we only have, like, two minutes left on the show. But, okay, Zoe, if, if you can hear me, like, what do you see these lucid dream experiences as? Like, are they... Are, how real are they to you? Uh, um... Well, it, it depends. I'm still working on it, but um, if if I can focus and I am still dreaming and I know I'm dreaming, it can be real enough to the point where, say, there's like some water in the dream, like I can feel the water on my skin, and it, it's pretty amazing. Um, recently, I've noticed that when I'm dreaming, um. I actually move through the dream as if I'm, like, floating. And I noticed uh, actually last week um, that I didn't have, like, legs <laughs> in the dream. The, the rest of my body kind of just faded off into kind of just tapered off. Yeah. It's nothing new. That, 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 yeah, like, I think our imagination of our bodies in our dreams is just that. Like, we just imagine ourselves having a physical body because that's what we're used to in this dimension. But in the dream dimension, technically, we're just, like, consciousness floating around or something. So, uh, and uh, Zoe, I think I appreciate you bringing up this topic of lucid dreaming because I know it's a popular topic. So we're going to get to it again in a future episode of Unfortunately, this episode is ending right now, and we're actually going to be cut off in terms of blog talk, but just in terms of wrapping up the show for the recording, for those of you who are interested, you can add Ian on Facebook. I'm sure he doesn't have a problem with that, so check the show note links, and you'll see his uh, Facebook address in there. And uh, other than that, Ian, I'd just like to say thank you again for being on the show. Um, now, we're already a little bit over time, but just uh, in terms of like a last message, what would you like to share with the people before we wrap this up? Um, thank you. And uh, just remember love. Remember exactly what you said. Uh, no matter what happens, it's all going to be okay, whatever comes our way, right? And um, just feel that and know that. And I, I knew that with my mind intellectually for a long time, but until I could feel it, that's really when my life started changing. And uh, there's various ways to do that just by going inward and meditating and stuff to build the feeling of love. So that's all I could really advise or say or the message I want to put out there. Yeah, yeah, it's quite quite simple but very true. So this idea of like being love and embodying love and no fear. And, and as you sort of realize it and start living that, then you're definitely going to start helping uh, shift the consciousness of the world for, for the better, I think, because that's what the world needs. We need less fear and more love. So with that said, we're going to wrap up the show. And again, Zoe, thanks for calling in. Um, you're more than welcome to call in on another episode, and I apologize it was only the last couple of minutes here, but I would love to be able to talk uh, more on air with you about your lucid dreaming experiences. So thanks again, Zoe. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. I'll, I'll definitely call in again. Cool. Awesome. All right. And uh, again, just for those of you who are listening, if you have not yet, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. And feel free to tune in every Saturday at 11 p.m. EST unless noted otherwise. So with that said, I am going to cue the outro music. And again, thank you, Ian. Thank you, Zoe. And to everyone else, we will see you in the future. And Peace and love. love. Thank you.